You've called it a swarm. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, up to, uh, let's say, um, uh, a year, two years ago, you could see that um, uh, the groups of jihadis, the various groups that you had, they had one leader, uh, and there was what you could call a, a kind of vertical communication. You know, the leader spoke to his followers, and then they would all do what, what he said. What we see nowadays, and I think that the internet and the social media have to do with that, is that um, there is more horizontal communication. There is not one leader that decides which way we are going. There are groups, and they decide amongst themselves which way shall we go. Uh, although the final direction uh, is still pretty clear, and that is we want to have the caliphate, we want to move to Syria. So what we see now is what you could call in, in group dynamics swarming, or uh, the, the, the idea of swarming, where many individuals um, without a visible leader actually lead themselves and decide on themselves which way they go. But if you take everything uh, together, uh, the amazing thing is that they all move to the same uh, direction. You know, they all fly in a swarm. There's no leader there. Mm. There's nobody who has a map and says, you know, we have to go this way. Yeah. But amazingly, they all uh, go the same way. That is what we see. A lot of horizontal communication, social media play an important role, the internet. So how much more difficult does that make your job? Well, you know, if you can single out a leader, then you know where to, where to attack, where to, where to move, where to focus your attention to. If you don't have a leader, if you have a swarm, that is self-guiding and self-deciding, it's much harder to focus your, your attention, your efforts. Uh, so that's why it's more difficult for us uh, to deal with the swarming principle than it was with the, uh, the leader-follower principle.